Shalom. I want to give all praise and glory unto Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Raka Kodash. Double honors goes to the elder apostles of Great Millstone for teaching us this truth. And also want to acknowledge your, all the Akiyam for pushing this truth with sincerity. All right, so this is a Shabai of GMS Denver. I'm going to go in on Psalm 137 today. It says, verse 1, By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yeah, we wept when we remembered Zion. All right, and this is when, this is when uh, the Israelites, so-called blacks, Native Americans, and Hispanics, went into uh, captivity under the Babylonians. All right, and when they knew that they actually, you know, knew they were Israelites, and same thing with the uh, the captivity of America, you know, when. They went into slavery in America. Israelites knew they were Israelites, okay? It wasn't until the people were destroyed mentally and physically that they forgot who they were. All right? <clears throat> and real quick, let's precept that since, since I brought it up. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Because our people don't know who they are. Right. Let me just pull this precept up. It's in Isaiah. It says, the ox knoweth his owner. This is Isaiah 1, 3. The ox knoweth his owner and the ass his master's crib. But Israel does not know, my people does not consider. All right? So Israelites, you Israelites out there, you don't even consider who you are. All right? You're too busy taking pride in being a black man, a Mexican man, you know, a Hispanic Chicano, you even got that Chicano pride, you know, but the Bible says you're an Israelite and it says you don't even consider who you are, all right, prophecy, 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 this whole book, all right, I'm going to go to Ezekiel, let's go to Ezekiel 1 and 1, and it says, now it came to pass in the thir 30th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river of Chabar, that the heavens were open, and I saw visions of God. Okay? So, you know, there's nothing new under the sun, and things repeat themselves. Our people have been in captivity in seven different captivities. America is the last captivity. All right? <clears throat> and as you can see here, the prophet Ezekiel... He says he was one of the captives, all right, in Babylon. And, um, <clears throat> you know, when he was under this great suffering as a captive is when he saw a vision of Yahweh, all right? So it made me realize that when we go into Jacob's trouble and they start throwing Israelites in the, uh, in the concentration camps, in the FEMA camps, you know, if you are an elect man and you get you happen to get thrown into a FEMA camp, hey, Yahweh's going to show you visions, you know. The prophets never cease, all right? But that's that's what really dawned on me, you know. Think about that suffering we're going to have to go through in Jacob's trouble where our prophets are going to see visions, all right? I'm going to go, going back to uh, Psalms uh, 137, and we're at verse 2. It says, We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. All right. So 
let's go get an image of a of a willow tree just so we can show you these these they call them weeping willows right because the way those leaves look like they're just kind of sagging down weeping you know they call them weeping willows so let's go back to that verse we hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. All right, because we got put in captivity, man. You think you're going to be uh, happy? You know, it's like when you, your first day in jail or whatever, you get sentenced. You know, you, you're going to, you're going to suffer, you know. Jacob's trouble is we're going to suffer, you know. And in verse 2, it says, we hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. And a harp, it represents like, you know, music and a happy time, you know. But this is quite the contrary. When you get taken into captivity or when you get taken into a FEMA camp during Jacob's trouble, hey, your your uh, countenance is going to be sad, you know. You're going to suffer. And that's why we're in this truth, man. We're getting diligent because the only people who are going to be able to deal with Jacob's trouble are the people who know the truth, who know why it's happening, who know, who understand why it's happening when it happens, all right? You think if you have no backbone or no no knowledge of this truth, you think you're going to be um, stable in, in, a, in a FEMA camp or in Jacob's trouble or in the hour of temptation when Esau, Edom, tries to put a microchip in you? All right, let's go to Isaiah 24 and 8 to precept. It said, The mirth of tabrets ceaseth, the noise of them that rejoiceth endeth, the joy of the harp ceaseth. All right, so we're not going to be playing harps and, you know, having mirth, which is laughter, being happy during that time. You know, the women are going to be brought to a low state. The men are going to be brought to a low state. Esau Edom is going to come down hard on this, on the nation of Israel, the so-called blacks, Native Americans, and so-called Hispanics. All right, and Trump is the man to uh, bring this into pass, you know, through the will of Yahweh. All right, let's go to another precept in Ezekiel. <clears throat> We're gonna to go to. 26, let's see, 13, okay, I missed it, Ezekiel 26 and 13, and I will cause the noise of thy songs to cease, and the sound of thy harp shall be no more heard, all right, so in all these precepts and these prophets, they were, they were all saying the same thing. Like, hey, you're you're not gonna be playing happy music when when uh you know we're taken into captivity when we're you know put in a FEMA camp in America. You know? <clears throat> no. It's gonna be the opposite. And if you don't have this truth, you know, and this stability, <clears throat> you're liable to lose your mind. You know? Let's read fourteen. And I will make thee like a top of a rock. Thou shalt be a place to spread nets upon. Thou shalt be built no more. For I, Yahweh, have spoken it, saith the Lord Yahweh. All right. And remember, you know, we're going to go through some drama in Jacob's trouble, man. The so-called white man is going to bring down great wrath, the Bible says, upon the children of Israel. And right now it's happening on a low level. But when it becomes full blown, it's gonna be it's gonna be something else, man. It says like no other time in the history of of uh planet Earth, you know. But meanwhile everybody's just not focused, not diligent, not in the scriptures. Everybody's more worried about you know, the Broncos season next year. Or how how did the Nuggets win last night? 
you know that's what everybody's worried about or whatever meaningless things that people are worried about in Babylon you need to focus on this truth we're getting into some crazy times you know they just gave that dude uh, Rush Limbaugh a medal of honor a medal of freedom or something like that they honored this you know man who's a uh, who's literally against the Israelites, you know. There's videos, footage of this man, you know, basically just talking shit about the children of Israel. But yet that man gets honored in in Babylon, all right? It's because they don't care about us. And the sooner you learn that and the sooner you realize that, the better off you're going to be, man. You know, when... We're in Psalms uh, 137, we're at verse 3, and when, uh, you know, when, when our forefathers went into captivity in Babylon, they knew who the enemy was, all right? And like I said, even in America, they knew who the enemy was, all right? Verse 3, for there, that, for there they that carried us away captive required of us a song, and they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. So these arrogant Edomites, you know, they're going to be like that. You know, they're already like that in America. But during Babylonian time, they did the same thing. You know, the Babylonians were saying, hey, sing us a song, Negro. Sing us a song, uh, wet back, you know. Dance for us. Make us laugh. You know what I mean? And now people have forgotten who they are, because remember, we read, my people doth not consider. Even the ox knows who, who his owner is, but the children of Israel don't know who, the, who, their, who their master is. They don't even know who they are. All right? Now you guys, you got clowns like comedians like Kevin Hart. You got entertainers. You know, you got the, the basketball athletes, the NFL athletes, the... the the best fighters in combat sports, they're all Israelites, you know. We're, we're set up as entertainment, you know. But in this, in this uh, captivity, you know, that's, that's what people want to do. They're, you have these young Israelites, they want to be a rapper or they want to be a, you know, an entertainer or a football player or a basketball player. They don't care about the truth. You know, they don't even understand the truth. But the remnant, the remnant does. You know, the Bible tells us the remnant will come back to the truth and repent. And that's what the men of the Lord are doing. All right. <clears throat> so, yeah, verse 3, it says, you know, they sing us one of the songs of Zion, you know, meaning sing us the songs of Israel. And verse 4 says, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land, you know, well, our people are in a strange land and they're singing the wrong songs, they're not singing the truth, they're singing the songs of Babylon, confusion, you know, adding more confusion. Verse 5, if I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning, all right, and the word cunning, some of the uh, acronyms is knowledge, purpose, and work. So, basically, um, he's saying, I for, if I forget thee, O Jerusalem, verse 5, let my right hand forget her cunning. So he's saying, hey, punish me, you know, let me forget the knowledge, let me forget the works, if I forget Jerusalem, and our people have, all right, they forgot who they are. They forgot their nationality. They've been destroyed. And he's saying, hey, just just let me forget the knowledge, the purpose, the work. Let me forget it all if I forget Jerusalem. Punish me. He's, he, this is a righteous prayer. You know, he's, he's saying, hey, you know, if I forget Jerusalem, hey, don't let me remember anything. Verse 6. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. And I, if I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. So, you know, this is a righteous prayer. He, he rather wouldn't even speak, meaning become dumb. Because that's what the word dumb means, you know, to not be able to speak. 
But he's saying, hey, if I forget Jerusalem, don't even let me talk. I'll be better off, you know. So you're better off not even talking if you've forgotten the truth, you know, than, you know, giving a, the, uh, the uh, you know, having lies coming out of your mouth and having having nonsense coming out of your mouth. You're better off just not even talking, better off being dumb. The Bible says. Alright. So we're going to go to. Ezekiel again. 3. 26. It says. Towards the bottom. Verse 26. And I will make thy tongue cleave to the roof of thy mouth. That thou shalt be dumb. And thou shalt not be able to. A reprover to them a reprover for they are a rebellious house but when I speak with thee I will open thy mouth and thou shalt say unto them thus saith the Lord God he that heareth let him hear and he that forbeareth let him forbear for they are a rebellious house All right so Yahweh is like hey when this is the, the this is the punishment you're going to have Israelites you're not even going to be able to talk, you know. Your tongue is going to cleave to the roof of your mouth. You're going to become dumb, and you, you're not going to be a reprover, you know. You're not going to correct, be able to correct them. Not only that, Israel is a rebellious house. And then verse 27, But when I speak with thee, I will open up thy mouth. So now when he, when he gives us the mercy of understanding his truth, that's what verse 27 is dealing with. He said, But when I speak with thee, I will open thy mouth, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith Yahweh, He that heareth, let him hear, and he that forbeareth, let him forbear. For they are a rebellious house. So that's how you know this truth is not for everybody, because some are going to hear, and some are going to forbear. And if you can hear this truth that the prophets are speaking, then that's a huge mercy of Yahweh that he gave you that understanding to, um, to hearken and listen to, to the truth that the prophets are giving you. All right. If you forbear it, we're not going to, you know, lose any sleep. Is why? Cuz it says, "Let him forbear." It's a rebellious house. You know, pr prepare them for uh, slaughter, you know, along with the heathen. Basically, that's what that's saying. Um <clears throat> Let's move on to verse 7. Back to Psalms 137 and 7. And it says, Remember, O Yahweh, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, Raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. And the Edom, we know who that is, the so-called white men. And when Jerusalem got destroyed, and the Israelites were, you know, bum-rushed, Edom was cheering it on, saying, raise it, raise it, destroy it, destroy it, right? You had Edom all up in that thing. Edom's always been our enemy, man. And the saying, raise it, raise it, means destroy. They're, they're happy at our fall. They're happy at our destruction, you know, in, in the past, in times past. Now let's go to precept that. And we're going to go to Jeremiah. 49 and we're going to go to <coughs> I'm going to read a chunk of this chapter because this is dealing with the so-called white man Edom verse 7 concerning Edom thus saith Yahweh of hosts is wisdom no more in Timon Timon is your modern day Germans is counsel perished from the prudent is their wisdom vanished? Flee ye, verse 8. Flee ye, turn back, dwell deep, O inhabitants of Dedan. For I will bring the calamity of Esau upon him the time that I will visit him. And when is he going to visit Esau? He's going to visit him in these last days, on the last day of wrath, with Yahweh Shai and the chariots. Verse 9. If grape gathers, Come to thee, would they not leave some gleaning grapes? If thieves by night 
they will destroy till they have enough. Right? And he's talking about Esau's greed and his greediness. You know, because Esau doesn't stop. He He's going to, if he's going to, you know, to be a grape gatherer, he's going to take the stem, the root, the grapes. He, gonna leave, he won't leave nothing. That's his spirit. If thieves by night, they will destroy till they have enough. See, he's saying even a thief by night, hey, he, well, as soon as they have enough, they, they'll at least stop. But not Esau. He's going to keep going until there's nothing left to take. Verse 10. But I have made Esau bear. I have uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled, and his brethren, and his neighbors, and he is not. All right? And Esau is already being hated. All right? All of these other countries are hating Esau, Edom, in these days, in these times. You know, even his, his own people, his brethren, right, is not, did not um, England just leave from the uh, United Nations, the Brexit? Even his brethren hates him, you know, even Esau hates himself is what we're saying, where we're getting at. Verse 11. Leave thy fatherless children, I will preserve them alive, and let thy widows trust in me. Alright, verse 12. For thus saith Yahweh, Behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunken. And art thou he that shall altogether go unpunished? Thou shalt not go unpunished, but thou shalt surely drink of it. Meaning Esau was going to get judgment. Edomites, America, Babylon. You're going to feel the wrath. You're going to drink of the same cup that you made the children of Israel drink of. You, that's why he says it. Do you think you're going to go unpunished? No, you ain't going to go unpunished. You're going to be, you're going to drink of the same damn cup that we have. 13. For I have sworn by myself, saith Yahweh, that Basra shall become a desolation, a reproach, a waste, and a curse. And all the cities thereof shall be perpetual wastes. All right. So Basra is a spiritual uh, name for uh, for America also. Not only Babylon, but also Basra, because Basra is a was a chief city in the land of Edom. All right. And uh, you know this is dealing with um, prophecy. This this chapter. All right, so Basra, which is also Edom, hey, you're going to be a desolation. And it says, and all the cities thereof shall be perpetual waste, meaning Denver, New York, Los Angeles, Miami. You know, wherever there's a city in America, it's going to be desolated with the nuclear fire. 15. For lo, I will make thee small among the heathen, and despised among men. And heathen means nations. And the nations, we already went over that, you know, they hate Edom. Does not the Iranians hate the Edomites? Does not the Afghanistans hate the Edomites? Does not, Russia is already starting to hate, you know, the American Edomite? And we read about it a little bit upward, upwards. It said the brethren, verse 10 up here, and his brethren. While the brethren of America, the American Edomite, is, is uh, Russia, the Russian Edomite. You know? So 15 is already coming to pass. Let's read it again. For lo, I will make thee small among the heathen, meaning the nations, and despised among men. Because people are tired of the the way of the American Edomite, you know, these the other world nations. 16. Thy terribleness hath deceived thee, and the pride of thine heart, O thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. And let me keep reading. That holdest the height of the hill, though thou shouldest make thy nest as high as the eagle, I will bring thee down from thence, saith Yahweh. All right, and you know, Let's just go to Google again. We're going to pull out a couple of things to support so we know for certain who this is talking about.
That's just all right. Who makes their nest as high as the eagle? There he is. The unclean bird, the eagle. You know? With the American flag. And then uh what else did it say? Um let's go back to it. Oh yeah, those that dwell us in the clefts of the rock. Cause we gotta go to the Petra images. Cause Petra was another chief city where the Edomites dwelt in in history. Alright. Let's go to it. And that's why the structures look like the structures of America. These are the the clefts of the rock. They used to carve their dwelling places in the clefts of the rock. This is one example. Does that not look like the Denver courthouse or the uh, any courthouse in America? You know, same structures. Because this is their history, the Edomite. They, uh, they live in these structures and they still they still have these structures in America because it's the same nation Petra dwelling in the clefts of the rock um starts at 17 also Edom shall be a desolation everyone that go by it shall be astonished and shall hiss at the plagues thereof all right and what are the plagues man there's all kind of plagues here in Babylon, America, and also in the in the in the planet. You know, right now, you know, Australia is on fire. You have countries that are being filled with locusts. <clears throat> the missiles are going to be a plague. The uh, microchip mark of the beast is going to be a plague. You know, the coronavirus, the flu, all of these uh, pestilence. You know, those are all plagues. And let's move on to verse 18. As in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighbor cities thereof, saith Yahweh, no man shall abide there, neither shall a son of man dwell in it. All right, and how did Sodom and Gomorrah get destroyed? With fire and brimstone. That's why he said that. Because this is going to be the same thing for the same fate for America Babylon. All right. 19, Behold, he shall come up like a lion from the swelling of Jordan against the habitation of the strong. Who's the, ha who's the strongest nation right now? It's Esau Edom. His military is stronger than anyone else's military. And Donald Trump likes to flex his, he, he likes to flex on all these other nations. But I will suddenly make him run away from her. And who is a chosen man that I may appoint over her? For who is like me, and who will appoint me the time? And who is that shepherd that will stand before me? Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord that he hath taken against Edom, and his purposes that he hath purposed against the inhabitants of Taman. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitations desolate with them. The earth is moved at the noise of her fall. So what does that mean? The earth is moved at the noise of her fall. It's because those missiles are going to be shaking the planet earth when all of these missiles start hitting America. And there's also going to be, obviously, missiles hitting other nations, but the most destruction is going to be in America, Babylon. At the cry of the, the noise thereof was heard in the Red Sea. Because they're going to hear Babylon. You're going to know. You're going to feel the, the, the earth tremble. You know. Even in the Red Sea. They have intercontinental missiles. Meaning these missiles will leave one continent and hit another continent. And they're going to be felt all through the earth. But like I said, Babylon is going to be hit by more missiles than any other place on planet earth. Jeremiah 49.22 Behold, he shall come up and fly as the eagle and spread his wings over Basra. Remember, Basra is spiritually a name for Edom. And at that day shall the heart of the mighty men of Edom 
be as the heart of a woman in her pangs. Meaning these Edomites are going to shit their pants. They're going to they're gonna be killed. They're going to be slaughtered. You know, Yahweh is, is a mighty, powerful, just God who, who deals with balance. All right. So you made us, you destroyed us, the Israelites. Guess what Yahweh is going to do? He's going to destroy you. So I'm going to go back to Psalms. And we're going to go back to 100, 100 chapter 137. And where am I at? <clears throat> Eight. And it says, O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. And we know America is Babylon. The word Babylon means confusion. And this place is confusion according to the scriptures. All right. That's why you have men who want to be women. You have women who want to be men. You know, you have... You have pride, arrogance in the in the in the government, in the in the president, you know. But let's read this again. Oh daughter of Babylon, because this is not dealing with Babylon. Like we started out this lesson with uh let's go back to the top. By the rivers of Babylon there we sat down, yeah, and we wept when we remembered Zion. See, this is when they were in the old ancient Babylon, but now this is referring verse eight is referring to future prophecy, the daughter of Babylon. All right, and who's the daughter of Babylon? America, Babylon, America. <laughs> See, the more you study this stuff, the more clear it is, man. You start to really, it sinks in with, with, the, with the elect, with the prophets. We see it clear as day. You people are in denial, they can't see it, you know. You're the deaf adder. Meaning you can't, even if we read it to you, you can't fathom it. You can't hear it. You can't understand it. You hear it, but you don't understand it. Um, and I actually skipped a precept. Let's go to it real quick. Lamentations. Lament. Right? Babylon will lament. All right, so we're going to uh, four lamentations, four and 21. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwellest in the land of Uz. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken, and thou shalt make thyself naked. <laughs> so Edom is going to get fucked up, man. You got the daughter of Edom, you know, which is the daughter of Babylon. And uh, this cup that you have made the Israelites drink from, you know, you put... The Negroes, so-called Negroes in slavery. You try to genocide the Native Americans. You know, you're throwing, to this day, you're throwing so-called Mexicans in cages, their kids. Well, guess what, man? You're going to drink off the same damn cup. And it says, the last line in verse 21, and shall make thyself naked. And what is what is making you naked? The internet is making you naked. The prophets, the knowledge all right, we're making you naked. You have shame on you now. All right, that's why Donald Trump spoke about the prophets of doom a couple weeks back. You know, because hey, you're 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 like you're naked, man. You're being revealed. All right, no longer are you, you know, you know, able to deceive people. You deceive the fools, which is the unbelievers, and you deceive the Trump supporters when those people are a piece of work. You know, they actually, you know, they, they, they actually believe Trump when he ends his speech and he says, God bless America with his deception. He's a phony, man. And you guys eat it up, you damn Trump supporters. Then you two thirds, too. <laughs> you have no vision, man. You have no sight. Yeah, I was going to fuck you up along with the Edomites. Verse 22, the punishment of. Of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. And who is the daughter of Zion? That's the Israelites. All right. Hence Zion Williamson, the basketball player. You know, the, these superstars, you had King James, right? LeBron James. Now you have Zion. It's not a coincidence, man. 
it's all coming to pass. Even in their sports, they have, you know, symbolism and, and the people that, that they've chosen to be these great athletes and superstars. It's spiritual, man. Now you have this young kid. He's only, I think, 18 or 19. And he's, he's a phenom, uh, what they call a phenom. And Zion Williamson, man. And this is dealing with future prophecy right here. Let's read it. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion, meaning Israel. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. <laughs> so Edom, you, you, you can see these prophecies being fulfilled. You're becoming naked, meaning People are knowing who you are according to the Bible. And who who's the one who shows the nations who Edom is? The prophets, right? We're able to break down the parables. We're able to teach you not only the Israelites, but also the heathen, who this wicked devil is, Edom, so-called white man. And all it is really is uh, you have you have a little time and you have a little uh, you have ears to listen. You know, we can break this down to anybody, you know. And the more we study, the more we, the more we, uh, you know, put our time, and be diligent. Well, now we have the ability to break down this Bible, and understand. We can understand it. <laughs> How can they learn without a preacher? The Bible says. So um, let me go back to. But yeah, Edom, your your time is running out, man. <coughs> Go back to Psalms one thirty seven, and we are on verse eight. O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stone. Let me backtrack to verse 8. So the daughter of Babylon, he's going to be destroyed, right? Who's the daughter of Babylon? It's Esau, Edom, America. And it says, Happy shall he be that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. So meaning it's just payback, right? Paybacks is a mother, right? That's what Esau is going to deal with. So even when we're in those FEMA camps and, you know, the missiles start coming, hey, we're going to look up to the sky and see our our Lord, Shai on the chariot and, um, you know, among all the other chariots. And we're going to know our deliverance is coming. You will, It could be a fright, frightening, fearful thing, but not, not like it's going to be for these Edomites and these two-thirds. Who they think it's a green alien coming out of the sky. Isaiah 13. I'm going to go ahead and read Isaiah. Let's see. Isaiah 13. Let's start at 1. The burden of Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amoz did see. So the prophet Isaiah, he saw this vision too. Lift ye, verse 2, lift ye a banner upon the high mountain, exalt the voice unto them, shake the hand, that they may go into the gates of the nobles. Oh, shoot. Verse 3, I have commanded my sanctified ones. I have also, and so, okay, the banner on the high mountain, that's dealing with the prophets, all right? I have commanded my sanctified ones, the verse 3, that's the prophets. I have also ca called my mighty ones for mine anger, even them that rejoice in my highness. All right, so he's commanding his sanctified ones to teach this truth in Babylon. Verse 4, the noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, the tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. Yahweh of hosts mustereth the host of battle. He's just preparing all of this end to come, and he's going to come. Well, first, Esau, Edom is going to come down hard on the us, but then our Lord and Savior is going to come hard down on Esau, Edom. Verse 5, They come from a far country, from the end of heaven, 
even Yahweh in the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. <laughs> and indignation means righteous hatred. And what are the weapons of his indignation? The missiles. All right. Verse 6. How will ye, how will ye, for the day of Yahweh is at hand, it shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt. All right, because you're going to have, all nations are going to melt. You know, they're going to be, they're only going to be a one third of Israel getting taken up in them chariots when this destruction comes. And they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them, and they shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. And they're going to be scared, man. It's going to be a, a day of destruction on the last day. Verse 9. Behold, the day of Yahweh cometh, cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate. And he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. Why will everything be darkened? Because the missiles are going to hit the ground. The ground is going to be plummeted into the sky, meaning the earth, the dirt. It's going to be like a big old, you know, dirt cloud. Remember, we, we read a couple of weeks back that... um. You know, you're going to be groping like a blind man, meaning feeling your way around. You won't be able to see. <laughs> and I will punish, verse 11, and I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. And I will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. He's going to humble all these hoes, all these women who think they're the shit. He's going to humble these these Edomites who think they're the shit, who think, you know, they can't be, they're indestructible. Nobody can beat them. They think that their 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 generations are continued forever. But Yahweh's got other plans. Isaiah 13, 12. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Oh, fire. So anyway, oh, fire is a place. It was like, uh, you know, the uh, Panama Canal where they do trade. Well, that's, the, you know, a man. And this is dealing with a man of understanding is going to be more precious than fine gold in these days. All right. During the destruction. You, you basically you're going to want somebody who can break down this truth for you in those last. In, in, I would say that last week. Or when those when all those missiles start hitting. <laughs> Therefore I will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. So the the earth is gonna remove out of her place. Why? Because it's gonna be getting hit by missiles. Verse 14. And it shall be cha be as the chaste row. And as a sheep that no man taketh up, they shall every man turn to his own people and flee every one into his own land. Right? So people are only going to trust people that look like them. <laughs> Verse 15. Everyone that is found shall be thrust through, and everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Their children also shall be dashed into pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. All right. So, you know, Christians, they, they like Donald Trump. What does he say? I watched a few speeches with him. He keeps saying every ch child is a blessing from God. But what, look at what we're reading in the Bible. Isaiah 13 and 16. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. So Donald Trump, that's how we know you're not a true Christian. That's how we know you're deceiving. You should be saying this stuff instead of trying to sound like the good guy and deceiving the people. Because I heard him say that in like two or three speeches that I've watched of him recently, where he says, every child is a, is a gift from God. <laughs> Verse 17, Behold, I will stir up the meads against them, which shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Everybody's going to be against Edom. Their bows also shall dash the young men into pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not spare children. Meaning the missiles, they're going to kill young people, 
old people, pregnant women, men, good the ones you call good men, you know, Joel Olsteins, your T.D. Jakes, the ones who are getting praise on this side, you know, it, the, the missiles are not going to discriminate. <laughs> Verse 19, in the Babylon, in Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, which is America, right? Is not America the glory of kingdoms? Everybody wants to come here. <coughs> the beauty of the Chaldees ex excellency shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh, there it goes again, to bringing up Sodom and Gomorrah. And this is spiritual Sodom, and spiritual Babylon, spiritual Egypt, spiritual Basra, as we brought out earlier. Verse 20, it shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation, neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there, neither shall the shepherds make their fold there, but wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and their houses shall be full of doleful creatures, and owls shall dwell there, and satyrs shall dance there. Right? And satire is like a, it's like a, it's a if you look it up it says it's a mytholo mythological beast with like a body of a man and a i'm sorry a, yeah the upper body of a man and the bottom body of a like a horse or like a goat or something look that one up and the wild, verse 22 and the wild beasts of the islands shall cry in their desolate houses and dragons in their ple pleasant palaces and her time is near to come and her days shall not be prolonged so the, the Bible says this destruction is coming and it's sooner than we all believe or think, you know. I'm going to finish off in Revelation. But yeah, that's that's that what's happening, man. It's going to all this stuff is going to come to pass. Mm. And this is I marked the whole chapter. You know what? I'm going to, well, let's see. Yeah, we'll keep going. We'll just finish it. Verse 18. After these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. Uh, talking about America. And it has become the habitation of devils and every hold of every foul spirit in the cage of every unclean and hateful bird, right? All You're going to have all this in Babylon. Verse 3, For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And America has the best delicacies and victuals right now, all right? The nations have drunk of the wine of America's um, Babylon juice. You know, verse four. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, meaning the Israelites, that ye be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not of her plagues. So the men who teach this truth and the men who are, are you know, the prophets and the servants, hey, we're coming out of her, meaning America, and we're not partakers of her sins and we're not receiving her plagues as a, as a reward. Verse five, what are her plagues? I told you, it's the missiles. It's the, it's the uh, mark of the beast. Verse five, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. All right, yeah, you got your satellites in heaven. You got your, and I, and I'm not talking about the the kingdom heaven. We're talking about just the, the, uh, the the, in space, you know. That's that's not the kingdom, but it is considered heaven, the heavens, you know, the skies. <clears throat> that's where those those missiles, those satellites, you, you your sins, Esau, Edom, you've got all your satellites up there and your missiles. Hey, you reach the heavens. And it says, verse 5, And God shall, hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double according to her works, in the cup which she hath filled, filled her to double. So Esau, Edom, you so-called white people, you're going to drink of the same cup that you, put, that you made us drink off of. Verse 7, 
how much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and I am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Right? That's how Esau feels, you know. And the word queen actually means prostitute or whore. Look that up. Online etymology. Verse 8. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord Yahweh who judgeth her. All right. So you're getting the point. I would encourage you to go read the rest of this chapter, verse 18. It really just talks about all the destruction that's coming to America, Babylon. And um, <clears throat> and then, you know, it's just payback. Verse Revelation 18. And Yahweh, he's going to, he's going to, you know, be the, the one who's who's um, paying back Esau, Edom, in America, Babylon, for all the sins and all of the oppression that you've put on the children of Israel, the sons of Israel. And um, it's just balance, all right? You destroyed us, God's going to destroy you, according to the Bible. But with that, I want to give all praise and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Raka Kodash. Double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone for teaching us this truth. And also I want to acknowledge all the Akiam pushing this truth on the streets of Bethlehem.